Greetings, everyone, and welcome back to TNO. I'm your host, Mr. Mocha Lover, and we're having a good time in 1968. Last time, we have gone through the focus tree quite a bit more, and we were able to do, I think I think we did a coalition of equals, the sun rises once more, we went th down this path with prioritizing development, but now we must choose whether we go down subsidies for Keretsu or aid for the Zaibatsu. So, at the time of this recording, I've gathered up the votes regarding support for each side, and like I said, at the time of this recording, there's more support for subsidies for the Keretsu. Aid for the Zaibatsu is not bad, but with the comments from yesterday, there's a little bit more support for the subsidies. While the Karatsu are industrialists in their own right, they have far less reach over Japan than the Zaibatsu and felt the Yasuda crash hard. Rather than let them go bankrupt and risk losing industrial strength, we should begin providing stimulus checks to get these companies back up and running. The Zaibatsu have only proven the cries uh, from reformists that no conglomerate is too big to fail. And Tokyo placated. Tokyo is always a loud and modern city, but the drive for recent re urban development by the Takaki uh, government had made it even more energized and lively. By day, the light rail system was charged between city districts, shepherding great masses of accountants, engineers, and technicians to their places of employment. By night, the white haze of street streetlights illuminated the once darkened areas of the city, and thousands flocked to their bellies in the restaurants with warm foods not provided and ration packs. The city moved faster, worked harder, and seemed much happier to benefit to have benefited from these infrastructural improvements. The percentage of homes with access to electricity, adequate sanitation, and central heating increased significantly, and these improvements were certainly recognized indeed. Citizens within the city expressed their support for the Takagi administration and hoped for further development of Tokyo worthy of true international prestige. Finally, very good. Very, very good. And we're still building up a lot of air bases down here. Yeah, we're gonna get some, some naval bases. We're gonna build up some forts as well. At least until we can build some more civilian factories, because we love building civilian factories when we play TNO. And we have no other room to build factories anyways. So, cool. Very, very nice. Budget-wise, we're not doing too bad. Over 3 billion, let's invest into the GDP, why not? And then, less than 700 billion, not bad. Ooh, undersea coordination tactics. Military Australia, the death of Salazar. Oh, that's a big, sad moment. Big, sad moment. Ooh, that's not bad. Not bad, not great, but not bad. Ooh, military spending. Oh, whoa! Look at that! Once we electrified and placated Tokyo, annual deficit? Not bad. Wow! Minus 60 billion? Nice. Very nice. You know, how many slots do we have? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nice. Alright. No harm in change. Or corporate decentralization. Let's go do that one. We get more max factories, even though we lose one civilian factory. That's kind of okay. We don't really need more stability for now, even though political power would be nice. The great issue with the old system was the assumption that the Zaibatsu, with the close ties of the government, could sustain themselves through any crisis. The past months have shown this to be a grave mistake. Business should be less tied down to the need of Tokyo, so that another affair like what befell the Yusuda can never happen again. We should encourage existing corporations to expand in new areas and bring smaller corporations from those regions into the fold. It's only 5% more max factories, but... That's okay with us. That's okay with us. Sense of security. Ah, minus 10% consumer gets... Oh, oh, wow. That is... That's pretty good. Let's go over here. 8.5%. 63%. Nice. Uh, I think we're working with these guys. I thought we were working with Miki as well. So, I'm not sure really if... Are we working with independence? We might be. We might not be. Can't move that at all. Well, whatever. Let's see. Air Doctrine. We have finished up our Air Doctrine, which is awesome. It is only 68, so maybe we should focus a little bit more on guns. Oh, we already are. Ah, support weapon 6. Why not? That seems pretty good. And Kaya. Well, let's see. If we do this, will our support go up any higher? No, it actually goes down. Whoopsie. Oh, well, that's okay. Kaya really has no support, which is good. Well, there's some support, but not a lot. Next up, we should do sweeping contracts. Why not? More political power again. To stimulate the Karatsu further. Some long-standing government contracts should be given to their industrial branches. The Zaibatsu should no longer be the only conglomerate working for Tokyo. Some competition will make it clear to the corporate boards that they cannot just rely on the old system to keep their status. The Karatsu will continue their ascension, and the Zaibatsu will be pushed to do better. Very good. Alright. Over 4 billion. Wow. Uh, let's do one more, and then the next time this happens, then we'll probably start slashing down the debt a little bit more. As long as we're around 400 billion, I'm going to feel pretty good about that. So, How are the the air bases? Looking pretty darn good. How's the Republic of China? They, they look really kind of ugly. They're not too ugly, but I don't like how they bulge out. 
and they have a little like hook around here. I think they can just take out Sichuan and Ji Ji Kang, Ji Kang. I think that'd be kind of nice, but that's just me. That's just me. Who am I? <clears throat> cool. Cup of, we have a cup of coffee here. Got some water. CCF victory in Canada. Uh, who's the CCF? Cooperative Commonwealth Federation, or yeah, Social Democratic and Agrarian Party. Okay, well, that's cool. Uh, writing it. Tired of popular anger at the dominating presence of American businesses in Canada. Ah, okay. Very cool. Aiding espionage? Sure. We can provide plenty of subsidies and loans to the Karetsu to make them a competitive force, but a beast as large as the Mitsubishi or Sutomo cannot be conquered without some more covert means. The scandal that this could create would look make us look like nothing more than corrupt stooges or corporate stooges, stooges but the reward is well worth it. A blind eye to the support or the corporate espionage would be helpful. But even more helpful would be giving their insiders some of our own information about the Zaibatsu's going on. Um, maybe we should have chosen the side then. Uh, I don't want to be corrupt. Uh, okay then. Well, that's not particularly ideal. Oh, gosh darn it. I did forget to do... Actually, well, I guess still okay. They're still doing their focuses, which is fine. So as long as they are still doing focuses, I think we'll do okay, but... Oh, Slovakia. Slovakia, huh. Yeah, hopefully this still works. Russo, finish ceasefire. Agreed. Okay, cool. Better infantry weapons. Let's get actual better infantry weapons with the Oma Type 24. Very cool. Cool. General Sun Dai Yang is arrested. Sun Dai Yang, Dian Ying, was relieved after the Jess Field 76 had let him go some days prior. He made a note to himself to stay out of the way of secret police in the future, especially now that he would soon be retiring. Still, he had been released and relieved of the burden of their suspicions, at least in the official capacity. It was not as if further interrogations would yield anything more, nothing had and they had nothing on him and it would continue that way. As he sat by the window, smoking a cheap cigarette, he wondered if any of his colleagues would also be interrogated. Still, the matter was soon over for him and thus not troubling himself too much with. It therefore came as a great surprise to General Dian Ying after opening the door to his apartment in the... to be greeted by the sight of three officers of the Kenpai Tai and a particularly nervous translator. Without as much as a faint gesture of respect for military rank, he was grabbed and handcuffed by the two Kenpai Tai agents, while the third read off a number of charges they had brought against him. <clears throat> Old General Sun Dian Ying was hurriedly shoved into the back of a featureless truck, while the Saint, <clears throat> while the Chinese translator did his best to relay the news to him. Dian Ying was sure they had nothing on him, just like with Jess Field 76. He couldn't help but feel like he would have been taken in for rather longer this time. <clears throat> it didn't take long for the Chinese authorities to announce Dian Ying's arrest and disappearance into the bowels of the Ken Fai Tei's local department. Most troubling, though, was the lack of any explanation from the, for the actions of the Japanese agents, who simply descended upon the old general's quiet apartment co complex, without as much as a phone call to any authority in China. A demand for transparency was in order, and it would soon be coming straight from the general staff of the ROC. To see the colleague treated in such a manner was a striking insult, and regardless of what ru overruling authority the Ken Fai Tei might have within the sphere, they had a dangerous line which could not go ignored. Why didn't they alert anyone? Yeah, why didn't you alert anyone? We're trying to cut out corruption here, guys. Um... We might need to rein these guys in. Which actually, I think someone said earlier in the campaign, in one of the comments, but... So we should probably do that. We've got 11 army XP, huh? Who you guys? Let's get rid of these things. I have bees. They're just not worth it. Now we're going to definitely need more tanks. That's fine. <clears throat> the RGOC General Staff Demands Explanation. <clears throat> Not wishing to waste any more time, that while the Kenpai Tai continues to violate on only a significant number of laws and treaties, but also the dignity of the Chinese army, they all see general staff gathered in the early morning to force the issue to a swift conclusion. After they sat around an office made hazy by a mixture of cigarette smoke after some hours of discussion, it said that a telegram would be sent straight to the very top, to the Prime Minister of Japan. The general staff would demand an answer to two questions relating to General Dian Ying's capture. Firstly, why had the Kenpai Tai decided to overrule the thorough and sound interrogation conducted by Jess Field 76? Secondly, why they decided to abduct the general without so much as a word to the proper authorities, most importantly, the ROC general staff itself. The telegram concluded with the request that any, should any wrongdoing be discovered, that the generals be allowed to deal with it. The message was then quickly dispatched after being marked as deceitfully urgent. Most of the general staff elected to wait for a response rather than retire to bed and risk finding that the situation is growing even more appalling. Without a when a reply from the Prime Minister did not arrive after several hours, the general staff were left with two possibilities as to what was occurring in Tokyo. Either the Japanese were still floundering for an appropriate answer to send back to them, or that the Prime Minister had simply decided to ignore their demands outright. This is troubling. Oh, why would we just why would we just take him? Oh, this 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 group. I I, I don't know, ma'am. We were doing we're doing pretty well so far, but 
think Team Go uh, tits up eventually, but China demands an explanation. Telegram sent by the General Staff of the ROC arrived at the Koh Tai uh, just in time for the Prime Minister's breakfast. After passing through a number of security checks, the telegram itself was delivered alongside the usual selection plates, cups, and other crockery. As the Prime Minister read through the message between sips of green tea, a look of frant or frank confusion followed by severe concern spread across his face. He had, of course, heard of General Dian Ying's previous arrest and subsequent unfruitful interrogation by the Jess Field 76, leading him to now believe that the man would fade away into retirement. Therefore, this news of the sudden and most of all mysterious second arrest by the Ken Partey was nothing short of extremely troubling. The matter was now worsened by the fact that the ROC General Staff were demanding answers and actions on the Prime Minister's part, and they had seemingly been aware of the issue before even himself. Breakfast ended rather quickly than usual, or more quickly than usual, as the Prime Minister rushed off to contact the Home Minister. As he had no explanation as to the matter either, he demanded that it be investigated immediately. In the meantime, he would send off more vague promise of a forthcoming documentation of Diang Ying's arrest. As a rushed job of a reply was sent back to Nanjing, the Prime Minister was left with what, what he thought, or with the thought, that the answer to the Chinese General Staff was seeking what the, they were seeking would be far more complex than anticipated. If we knew anything, we'd tell you already. Yeah, this is... Troublesome to say the least. Quite troublesome. Let's see, we got enough artillery. Anything we got enough of? Yeah, motorized. We can lower motorized pretty much very little. Aiding espionage? Well, I guess we need that against Ken Pai Tai, but still. No harm in change. Enticing the parliament. The House of Support appears goes up. The Imperial Diet is the front line for most politicians in Japan. A whirlwind of secret deals and lack minded cliques hidden behind the veil of the Yok Yosu Kan. Yoku Sankai. It is impossible to convince every member of the benefit the Karatsu will bring, let alone convince them to vote on it, but working to build new plants or offices in some representative's district will sweeten the deal enough to get through the mud. You get more stability. How great. How great. The Home Minister is in short report. With the Prime Minister attempting to keep the ROC General Staff distracted with the promises of soon to be delivered explanation of the General Dian Ying's arrest, it was now up to the Home Minister to formalize a report that would hopefully rectify the increasingly, uh, matter. Increasingly concerning matter. After some dubious reluctance on the part of the Ken Pai Tai station in Nanjing, the Home Minister was finally able to acquire a copy of the report. The initial sections of the documents explained that Dian Ying had been arrested following the Ken Pai Tai's dissatisfaction with the previous efforts of Jessfield 76. Following paragraphs detailed the pressing urgency of acquired proper information from the old general, with fears that the wider issues being examined by the Ken Pai Tai might grow out of control. The Home Minister found himself more confused than ever, yet there were still more documents to examine. Dian Ying, as it turned out, was only a small part of something much larger in scale. While the Japanese Secret Service had naturally dedicated much of their time to eradicating any traces of potential Chinese resistance from the ROC, they had in recent months began to focus on potential infiltration on the Japanese army. Dian Ying's arrest was an attempt to find a link between the resistance and any Japanese officers that might have become compromised in some capacity. With this revelation now in the hands of the Home Minister, he opted to immediately deliver his report to the Prime Minister in person. As expected, the Prime Minister was deeply concerned about the developments. There was little souls to, to be had in knowing that the situation in China might be truly disastrous. The Prime Minister could only hope that the Kenpai Tao might prove more forthcoming with their information in the future. As the Home Minister ex exited his office, he could only stare at the document presented before him, hoping that the characters on the paper might materialize into solution. Troubling, to say the least. So basically, we didn't get that much out of him. Gosh darn it. That seems like such a big problem. Such a not good thing happened. From the Valley of the Dead, the sun was fading, the shadows got longer and longer, till beams shining through the windows crest silhouettes and the ground that were outlandish and high, like beasts in a shadow puppet show. <clears throat> Takagi was tapping his foot on the ground anxiously. He had to get the call. For what must have been the fourth time in that hour, he checked the lines. They were not cut or bugged, the lines were secure, but no amount of reassurance would convince himself. The room was too dark, he did not like to see his own shadow. It loomed over him, followed him, and would never leave. He despised it for that. <clears throat> Pulling the cord on the lamp, he read through the papers again, his hands shaking as he pulled them to the light of the lamp. From Nanjing, the Ken Pai Tai, all connected to the end of the war with China. The fa final moments, he remembered those days, how it all seemed so clear. These papers offered a glimpse at those times when peace on all the world was certain. And that grim photo sitting atop the neat stacks of papers, a body was unrecognizable, crushed by Chongqing rubble, rubble and burned to a cinder. All the evidence was coming together in the most terrifying way. It made Tagaki seek to his stomach. The f telephone rang. Takagi hesitated for a moment. His heart was beating faster than it ever had rung before, r faster than when the bombs hit the Enterprise or when the Germans blew up Pearl Harbor. Suddenly his gut made the choice for him, and his hands shot for the telephone. I apologize for my mispronunciations of things and my lack of clarity, but that's probably going to continue. <laughs> my apologies. The Great Conspiracy. Oh no. As Ken Partey reports made their way to Tokyo, it's becoming clear to the Home Minister how truly bad the Chinese infiltration had become. Old reports that actual 
had little actual basis in the claims of mass infiltration of the Japanese army. They spoke little of Dai Li either, instead of presenting a number of theories as to which Chinese rebels were believed to be so alive and capable of directing such a plot against the co-prosperity sphere. Yet as more and more information arrived at the Home Minister's office, mere rumors and dubious theories began to transform into genuine I ideas or facts. The name Dai Li began to appear in more and more reports, and as it did, so did the names of many Japanese officers. Some were believed to have willingly joined Dai Li's cause, fully aware of their betrayal. Others were seemingly unaware of their crimes, having been misled by the multitude of agents that the Chinese had spread throughout the sphere. With each moment, with each paper that was read, with each telegram from the Nanjing Kenpai Tag, a conspiracy was being unveiled. As the Home Minister discovered more and more about the seemingly bottomless conspiracy, the circle of those he dared to share his findings with continued to shrink. He had already begun looking or locking away any document pertaining to Dai Li when he left his office for even a moment. He dismissed his usual assistants too, preferring to copy each file by himself. Another safe, if tedious, measure. For now, he would continue to report to the Prime Minister and ever, only ever in person. Hmm. If anyone else was to hear of Dai Li, it would be on Kantai's authority. Oh no. Yeah, I did hear about this. Like, there's obviously an Order 44, but. I'm not sure how it goes, because I've not played this far as Japan before, so the War Minister's proposal. The Prime Minister was not exactly sure what he was expecting, and his War Minister also did not seem to know with certainty what exactly he should expect. They sat down in the cabinet, and for a few minutes they were completely silent. He could expect anything, outright orders, suggestions for resignation, forceful demands of explanations or immediate concessions. Instead, the War Minister was heavily sighed as he seemed to be struck as heavily by this news as him. I thought I could trust him, you know, he said. I really thought so. The Prime Minister silently nodded. The General stirred up in his tea, and looked, not looking at the Prime Minister directly into his eyes. Uh, I just wonder how we got here. I don't actually think Dai Li is important, he said. What is important is that the army is no longer the paragon of virtue. The men in high ranks, working with such war criminals and the enemies of the Empire? Madness, pure madness. But it's all true. The leader of Japan's civil government sighed. We should conduct an investigation immediately to find out the traitors and deliver justice, he promised. Yes, I know, the war minister said. You know how this works. Those are my conditions. Half an hour later, they were already set in place. The investigation was supposed to be swift, decisive, concluded swiftly, and in limited scale. The army demanded some sort of ability to influence the investigation, although the details would be discussed later. The war minister also asked for the prime minister to inform him regularly of the progress. Although the conditions were downright insulting for the elected prime minister of Japan, he felt down in his heart that there was not much else choice. We are in no position to deny what's going to happen. Oh, boy. Picking a chief investigator. Once plans for the investigation were brought out of the military, their reaction was predictable. Many forceful letters and telegrams were sent out to the Prime Minister before two sides came to the negotiating table. Akira Muto was a long standing militarist, and his reputation was notorious all among the Japanese government for his connections to the conspiracies and coups in the interwar years. Now he entered the Prime Minister's office, accompanied by half a dozen other Army Navy officers, to settle the matter in the investigation. You do understand that we will be more than willing to supervise the investigations, said Muto bluntly, his finger rapping on the hardwood chair as he sat across from the Prime Minister. I do understand, he replied, but this is a matter of criminal investigation. Many of my associates are suggesting the Home Ministry lead the case. To have the military supervisors in an investigation over the Imperial Army in China would likely leave many stones unturned. General Muto winced. Even in his old age, he was prone to bouts of anger, but he cannot risk humiliating himself in front of the Prime Minister. He insisted once again that leading the Home Ministry in charge would be nothing of a bureaucratic mess, and the only hand more power to the meddlesome representative it is in Tokyo. Your Excellency, the army can acquire the records and suspects faster than it will take the whole ministry. This is an incident outside of Japan and should fall under our administration, not Tokyo's. It seems that a choice will need to be made as to who will fall, who, who is the full authority on the investigation. More likely than not, someone close is going to be un very unhappy. Support goes down, paranoia decreases. Military edge is what we need. I kind of like that, but we're going to go with the whole ministry. It's not good if you have one, one organization lead an investigation into the same organization. So, I'm not sure how this, I really don't know how this is going to turn out. So, we'll see what happens. Uh, working with the intrigue? Ooh, that's a lot more political power. With the corruption that caused the uh, Yasuda incidents is enough to topple any prime minister in order to ensure that we can protect ourselves or at least put distance between us and the guilty politicians. Should anything that scale happen again, some extra measures should have to be taken. Digging into the tangled webs of Zaibatsu politics will be a hassle, but making sure that we have ears in the boardrooms will keep us one step ahead of any shady deals. Now, I haven't clicked on this one yet because we don't have to do it, but no harm in change. It's only three weeks up. The great conspiracy unfolds. So, the Kenpaite officer said to Masahiro, What did you see in the forest, Lieutenant Masahiro? Or, yeah. The HQ would be incredibly interested in the deaths of such. They sat in a gray concrete room with a single electric bulb lighting the conversation. Masahiro could not hear what was going on outside. The Kenpaite had requested that he come to their office for questioning. That was the scare of his day, words that chilled his soul. Now that he was in the station, he was in the hands of the military police. 
Well, Masahiro began. The villagers have sighted a figure walking through the bamboo forest, wearing a cloak made out of the long leaves. He rustled his hands against one another. They said that it was a spirit of vengeance, you know, like a Chinese version of Yukai. I did not believe them either. I don't take many walks out there in the woods, but the reports kept coming in. Soon my office was full of villagers outright gossiping that a spirit of vengeance is coming for us all. The Kenpai Tide officer looked at Masahiro, noting everything that he said. Do you believe it, Masahiro-san? Personally? No, I don't. As I said, I don't take many walks out there in the woods. However, when I do, there's a certain chill that runs through me. He looked down at his fingers so like someone was watching me. Hmm. The Kenpai Tide officer coughed. That'll be all. Thank you, Lieutenant Masahiro. Just one question. The officer looked at him intently. How will you go about ghostbusting? Oh, crud. Oh, no. We lose organization, army, or army organization regain as well. War support, daily command power, army professionalism change goes down by two? Holy crap. If the crisis is not wrapped up in a satisfactory manner, there are grave consequences for the whole of the Japanese Empire. Oh no, oh no. If I screw this up, I'm probably gonna do fade in, fade outs, and have to re maybe replay this a little bit, but. Oh, I don't like that. Man, I just, I just want to get to the focuses. I don't want any great conspiracy. I just want to make Japan superior to everyone again, that's all. A little bit of lag, and have some coffee. 9% support, 63%, not bad. Good data brings an end to the Indonesian civil war. Oh. Hey, Indonesia. Wait, coup d'etat. What? Did this... Is there something else here? Wait, why did it cancel? Um... Okay, what? Oh, whatever then. A great conspiracy? Perhaps it might be true. Alright, so it looks like we got some, some decisions here. We can still welcome Italy to the National Die, but that's gonna take forever. The Dai Li Crisis Investigation. What well, was supposed to be a simple intelligence operation turned out to be one of the largest conspiracies Japan has ever underwent as a nation. It speaks volumes as to how huge it is that the central government is unable to determine the sheer scale of the conspiracy, let alone who's involved in it or what the aim is. There are five possible leads one could take to solve the investigation, ranging from incursions deep into China to covert operations in the U.S., and lastly, the investigation within Japan itself. Which path is chosen would ultimately determine the success in investigating the conspiracy. Pick the correct path and your conspiratorial investigation will go quicker than expected. Pick the wrong path and you'll be setting yourself down a dark path for not only Japan, but the whole co-prosperity sphere. Gathered sufficient details about regarding the Chinese involvement in the investigation. Internal disruptions for investigation. Bears in Shanghai. Oh my goodness. I don't know which path to take. Oh, it's not going to be good. The Chongqing Trail. Ooh. I mean, that wouldn't be bad. I really want to investigate the Japanese. Spy master and terror of uh, the leash of Chiang Kai-shek and other allies among the were perfidious Americans. So this is one is investigating the Americans. This one is created profile of Dai Li. Investigate Chinese intelligence service. Investigate the Kenpai Tai. I, I want to go with the Kenpai Tai because, I mean, even the ROC didn't know what was going on. So it's with the Imperial Japanese Army's intelligence arm, one that has fingers everywhere and eyes in every pie. It would be a difficult challenge to crack through their nine penetrable bubble, but it's worth a try. Let's go with them. An internal investigation. Now, let's make sure we keep doing this as well. I almost forgot about this. The leading body in the investigation thus far, the Kenpai Tai, has given little reason for us to suspect them in being involved in the conspiracy itself, being of decent standing, especially compared to our allies in the Nanjing government. However, it does not and should not rule them out from investigative scrutiny, especially given their trail that leads back to the Imperial Army's entire command structure. It must be said, however, that investigating leads to the I to the IJA, would need to be threaded very, very carefully, for if we are suspected of trying to break their monopolies of power, they would react to the means that would threaten the very stability of our government, let alone the investigation. The thin black line. This is not going to be good. Actually, wait, can we do all of them? Oh, the fate of the American Expeditionary Forces. The Sino-American Cooperative Organization, the American Expeditionary Force that was deployed during the Second World War, was believed to have been fully evacuated by 44. With far more pressing matters to be taken care of, the traces left behind the Asaka were quickly investigated and mostly forgotten. It became little more than a memory from the war that left little behind a concern in Japan, or so it was believed. Well, the link between Americans and Dai Li have been recently uncovered. The remaining or the remains of the SACO's presence that littered China became a priority for the investigators. A number of plans were erected in a close proximity to each other, and this site might prove vital to providing finding out what truly happened to the Americans. At the same time, security ministers contacted spies in the U.S. should they be capable of finding files on the fate of the expeditionary forces. It is suspected that records of who among the Americans returned alive are kept, still kept, and that they are within our reach. At the behest of the Home Minister, it was decided that the investigating officers would be given the reins to choose which route to pursue first. There is race through the heads of the investigators as they considered their options. Had Dai Li escaped their war through which, with the evacuated Americans, only to return a few months ago? As SACO helped to establish Dai Li's presence in China over 20 years ago. 
Could it be that the U.S. was funding Dai Li, using the evacuation in 44 as a cover for the forces secure, secure, secretly remaining in the region? In truth, the only truth that the investigators could count on so far was that being, only digging deeper would, would they uncover what they saw. Did all Americans really abandon China? Well, it is 68, so they probably did, but... So we did that one. <clears throat> Can we really choose all these? That seems kind of OP if we do that, but whatever. Shadows of Nanjing remains of Ju Jun Tong. The Chinese army, while small, was to be trusted. The Republic of China's administration was also to be trusted as great reforms of the Gao Zong Wu were seen as beneficial to the whole sphere. Not anymore, though. With revelations of Dai Li being alive, all cases were open once again. Corruption, so easily ignored earlier, now became the threat of national security. The parties, bizarre relationships, none of that was to be ignored anymore. Post-1947, the Republic of China administration was purged out of agents, or at least it was believed so. Now, with the unholy revelations being unleashed, those events would ring their alarm now would. Of course, the Republic of China and its administration is loyal to us, but lone wolves can work in structures nonetheless. It is therefore very important to immediately conduct full-scale investigation into both civilian administration of Nanjing government and intelligence services of Jess Field 76 whose chief, Ding uh, Mokun, while loyal, proved to be rather incompetent. Unfortunately, while this objective has to be done, we have to rely on the Chinese cooperation with us and that they will not slow down the investigation and will do it live. Daily a mastermind behind everything. For thousands of Japanese troops, the name of a mysterious individual responsible for the suffering and the death was not known. Many Chinese patriots died to assassins employed by him, not realizing the mastermind behind it. After Northern Expedition, to Japanese Dai Li was just one of many of almost anonymous officials. The true nature of the monster was revealed only later. Thousands dead, loyal allies gone, and every carefully planned offensive hit by the leaks, all possible thanks to the spy master of a cursed uh, Chiang Kai-shek. In the aftermath of the battle of the Chong. Qing, Chongqing, the infamous Himmler of China was believed to be dead. Now, after he has revealed many questions of old, return with even more tremendous force. Who is this man? Who, what does he believe? What are his goals? Who are the people that follow him? Questions pop, and they must be answered, and they investigate the Chongqing Trail. The Battle of Chongqing ended in 47. <clears throat> And as the last battle of World War II, both sides were equally devastated. Due to starvation and general dissent, most of the proper army of Chiang Kai-shek collapsed into disorganized militias. One of those militias was the infamous loyal patriotic army led by Dai Li. Despite massive shortages, Dai Li's leadership and fanaticism inspired his men to ferociously resist the Japanese. In the ruins of Chongqing, the supposedly dead body of Dai Li was found, and with the LPA units limiting their activity, it was thought that total victory was finally won. Now that we know that Dai Li cheated to death, we cannot be certain anymore. There are two major questions. Did LPA survive the aftermath of the Chongqing battle? And and if yes, are they still related to the great conspiracy set by Dai Li? Let's examine the aftermath of the Battle of Chongqing. It's only literally more than 21 years, though. <clears throat> A network of relations. Despite being the only ones initially bringing up the matter of Dai Li's possible infiltration of the military, the Ken Pai had, had since then kept rather quiet on the matter. While their aid in bringing the matter to the attention of the whole minister was a significant sign of loyalty and trust, some of the investigating officers wondered if the Ken Pai Tai's newfound silence was cause of concern. It might have been possible that Dai Li had infiltrated their lower ranks too in order to remain one step ahead of the adversaries. Despite their well-meaning and well ultimately friendly request to examine the Ken Pai Tai for signs of conspiracy or infiltration. <clears throat> The administrators, or investigators, were told to stand down by the military upon each attempt they made. Even the whole minister received a sign of the military scrutiny, in the form of a letter encouraging him to focus his attention on the actual investigation, not wanting to be seemingly pacified by these idle demands of both himself and his and investigators. The whole minister began to consider what he could do to break through the military blockade. There's so many within the Army and Navy who could count as allies. Some even owed him favors going years back. The minister had a few phone calls to make and even a few letters to write. Within a few days, investigators were finally granted access to sections of the Army and Navy records, particularly regarded finance. It was, at the very least, a decent starting point, in order to investigate the Ken Pai Tai themselves, they needed to discover the reasons for the military's stubbornness. Hopefully they would crack without too much resistance. For discrepancies, Navy or Army? Hmm. I want to go with the Army. That's probably kind of dangerous. Oh, investigate them some more. <clears throat> um, internal investigation? Uh, yeah, we already read this once. So, okay. Oh, can we do this again? The fate of the... Oh, yeah. Sino-American Cooperative Organization. Yeah, yeah. Do these just keep popping up again and again? Ooh, audit result. Jun Tong was decentralized. <coughs> I apologize for clearing my voice a whole bunch. So... Jun Tong was decentralized. The group of agents waiting in the room were from two very separate worlds. To the left sat a number of Chinese intelligence officials. 
working to catch down the last traitors to the Chinese regime. To the right, the heart of the Jap Japan's investigative committee on a mission to find, find a once dead terrorist now influencing all of China to revolt. The Japanese investigators were hesitant of the Chinese comrades' findings, but remained eager to, find the, to see the final results of the audit. The head of the joint Sino-Japanese group entered, holding a pile of papers, a summation of the work tracking down the Jun Tong. He distributed copies across the table, and the room was silent, but for the flipping of the paper and breathing. Auditing revealed that the Jun Tong, Dai Li's powerful intelligence agency, is not likely in a direct command structure. Rather, it appears that the Jun Tong has become decentralized, as small cells dot all of China with little cross communication. A single hunt might bring in just a half a dozen agents with no direct superiors. It seems that we need to find out how exactly these cells coordinate their findings if Himmler of China is to be caught and defeated. Any intercepted message must be analyzed thoroughly from now on. But how could he do it with so, so much surveillance? How to cheat death. The investigators were stupefied at the task ahead of them. Dai Li was alive and planning resistance in China. And only, the only reason anyone was aware of this was a policeman noticed that the charred corpse was too short. Who knows what other information must have been passed over. The most powerful men in Japan would want answers now, and so the vetted agents went to work. Day and night, investigators poured through every footnote they had on his organization. During 44, there was at least 100,000 other Jun Tong agents throughout China, and probably twice as many military or pol political men who could follow the man out of Chongqing. A network that so many people would need to be whittled down if any evidence was to be more than a hunt for a senile ex-spy decrypted list from war detailed... <clears throat> Hundreds of NRA cells and caches, fortunately for the archivists. There's plenty of records from the IJA about which whole hideouts or holdouts have been found and eliminated. After days of searching, it became clear that Dai Li had plenty of ways to get out of Chongqing, even with other anti Japanese leaders declaring missing. A truly cunning and worthy opponent indeed. Well, let's see if he actually exists. And oh my gosh, remains the loyal patriotic army. Tai. Takaichi Takamura's office swolsters and in the humid Sichuan weather, punctuated by the distinct smell of Chenghua's and a smattering of both Japanese and Chinese among his clerks. Cheng Duel was nearing the far ends of Tokyo's grasp over China, and while many it may not be an active war zone like Main Jiang was, it was pretty dead end posting for a career bureaucrat, that is, until the reports by panicking locals started flooding. It started with an upsurge of watchmen weapons requ requisitions, sure. A few surplus rifles and sidearms, who cares what goes missing in the labyrinth of Japanese-controlled China anyway? Then, bit by bit, the weapons started to disappear, and then the declarations and warning started. Takamura was called to investigate an attack on the depot far to the north. Regarding or reading through the details of the attack, he felt his blood freeze. This is for Chongqing. There isn't, there aren't that many organized resistance forces in the region that are capable of such an attack, and the telltale signs were all there. Surely this can't be, uttered Takamura. We got rid of the LPA ages ago. Call Sato or Seto for a private meeting. I think we may be on something here. Irrelevant. Focus on Junting Corps. Uh, malicious forces. Juntong Corps. Hmm. So there was an attack on the depot? Well, let's see what happens. A network of relations. Despite being the only ones that initially bring up the matter of Dai Li's possible infiltration of the military, the Kampai Tai has since then kept rather quiet on the matter. What their aid in bringing the matter to the attention of the home minister was a significant a sign of loyalty and trust. Some of the investigating officers wondered if the Kampai Tai's newfound silence was a cause of concern. It might have been possible that the Dai Li had infiltrated their lower ranks too, in order to remain one step ahead of his adversaries. Despite their well-meaning and ultimately friendly request to examine the Kenpai Tai for signs of conspiratorial infiltration, the investigators were told to stand down by the military upon each attempt they made. Even the Home Minister received a sign of the military scrutiny, in the form of a letter encouraging him to focus his attention on the actual investigation, not wanting to be seemingly pacified by these outer demands of both himself and his investigators. The Home Minister began to consider what he could do to break through the military blockade. There's still many within the army and navy who could count as allies, some even owed him for his favors going years back. The Minister of a few phone calls to make and even a couple letters to write. Did I already read this? Hmm. Within a few days, the investigators were finally greeted, granted access to sections of the Army and Navy's records, particularly regarding finance. We have read this. Didn't we already? Okay, we'll do the Navy this time. Initial findings? Uh, let's see. The investigation was on the surface going well. The agents were not per treated particularly well by the hosts across a number of Army offices and barracks. They were met with a stern and almost defiant glances as they went about the work. Files arrived on time and interviews were carried out, always together with those seemingly ubiquitous looks of anger. Yet the agents were still able to carry out their task, albeit with an unfortunate aura around them at all times. The investigation swept through a number of low-level sections of the army and in seemingly very little time. The daunting and dangerous upper levels were next. Fortunately for him, there would be a number of assets courtesy of the Home Minister to aid them. A number of al aligned army personnel would make sure the operation ran smoothly. If one soldier refused to deliver a document, there would soon be enough to be delivered by a superior officer. Interviews went by with so much difficulty. As a word or two from the Home Minister kept the army mostly in check, it was enough to make the officers know that cooperation would lead to a hastened promotion and not a hastened retirement, after all. And all in all, 
The assistance of the whole minister was more than enough to aid in the investigation. Among the plethora of unusual and suspicious documents and collected by the investigating agents, a selection of financial records stood out to the most. The first detail of note was that they concerned a number of Kenfite officers. The second detail was that these officers had become obscenely wealthy over the course of only a few weeks. Money seemed to pour into the welfare of these military uh, police officers, and yet no point did the record state why this had been authorized. A new series of interviews, uh, with all proof of the great reluctance by the Minister of War, were conducted. Some of these soldiers had heard rumors of fortunes materializing for certain officers among the Camp Pai Tag. While these rumors didn't, hadn't told them uh, anything of a source for the Yen, the, source, the soldiers had come to agree hypothesis. It was simple enough that the Camp Pai Tai was now in business of accepting particularly high bribes, something fishy indeed. Oh boy. It's always good to look into finances and uh, adrift in the sea of late leads. Despite all the information that was, the investigator had gathered, something simply was not adding up. It followed several good t leads, tied the evidence together, and still wound up at a brick wall. Surely just missed some detail? Perhaps you needed to listen to some of the interviews again. There'd be some leak somewhere. Across the table, it's called the up from the papers. Why don't you take a break for the day? You've been looking over the same leads for hours now. I doubt you've actually gone anywhere. It's not that I'm stuck. It's something that isn't adding together properly. No matter how I look at it, there's always a dead end. I would appreciate your help. Well, my advice is that you stop and try something else. You're acting as if you already had the big picture. Some th so perhaps something really is just missing. The investigator was forced to concede. There are other plans for the investigation to pursue. We are wasting time. And wasting time. Sako's background. Let's... Ooh, we already read this, I think, again. Uh, let's see. Yeah. In 44, I remember that. Theories raced through the, the, investiga the heads of the investigators as they consider their options. Had they escaped? Let's go with... Investigate the crash sites again. We could even do that once. Let's invert... Uh, alert these guys. Remains of the Little Patriotic Army. This is for Chongqing. We did last time irrelevant focus on Jung Corps. Launch investigation into Dai Li's militia force. Might as well, right? Ooh, he can go in and invest more in the GDP. Initial findings. Oh, okay. These keep going on. Uh, oh, crap. Uh, do that one again. Uh, let's do the initial findings. Simply put. The investigation could not find anything relevant to the conspiracy. The Navy, ever elected to submit to interrogations to hand over their files, still had provided the investigating agents with enough information to reach a conclusion. It was certainly a disappointing end to another few weeks of hard work for them. They examined financial recruitment and diplomatic records for traces of anything incriminating and turned up empty-handed. Interviews provided little else to the use of the investigation. Even if a number of ships were searched, cargo was open and then checked and some boats were particularly dismantled to check for hidden compartments or storage areas. Nothing beyond the official records was ever found. It would appear, never be quite possible to tell exactly what the Navy was doing, for there were certainly a number of secrets that the Navy, they would rather die than let slip, but they're not harboring the ponds of Dai Li. While the lack of proper results was never positive, the Home Minister was at last, or at least relieved, to be able to check the Navy off the list. The amusing thought of holding any and all meetings relevant to the Dai Li situation on Navy ships from this point crossed his mind before he regained focus. There are other paths for the investigation to pursue. He hoped that they would be resolved as easily as the Navy had been. Some have suggested that attempting to clear the army suspicion would be a wise choice. It was, it was in many ways quite dangerous to let either branch of the military operate without being cleared of suspicions, especially the Dai Li had turned so many officers into his puppets. Yet examining the military had certain political complications too, just as with the Navy. As the home minister began to retire for the night, his head was filled with choices that he would once again have to make. It was never an easy choice, seemingly growling, growing more difficult as the op options narrowed. Failure seemed like a dangerous probable possibility at this point. It would be another long night for the home minister. No suspicions or suspects to be had. The analysis of transferred money. While the Camp I Tai officers were currently out of reach, having been reported as an out on covert assignment, their families were not. Fortunately for the investigation, they were, that was where the trail of money led them. The Camp I Tai officers, or officials, suddenly discovered fortunes that had not been sent directly to the bank accounts. Instead, the money had gone towards their close relations, whether that be their girlfriends, wives, parents, or siblings. The interviews with these relatives went well. Some coaxing was initially required, but as many of them felt anxious about their money possibly being taken away from them. The fears were eventually recalled with the realization of the investigator's actual interest. Among those questioned, the universal story was that of a charitable donation having been made to them due to the Ken Pate family member. The benefactor was always anonymous, at least to the recipients of the money. Theories raged as just to where the money could be coming from. Naturally, there were many ideas tossed about the money merely coming from the Dai Li or an associate of his. Some suggested that interference from powerful business groups such as a Karetsu trying to utilize members of the Kanpai Tai against their competitors. Possible American involvement was the idea that intrigued the investigators most. They would, wouldn't put it past the CIA to attempt to corrupt a part of the military police into leaking valuable information or to overlook one or two spies. Hypothesis aside, there's still much work to do to verify any one of them. The reports of the mysterious sums of yen appearing out of thin air were certainly not good signs, no matter who the cash originally belonged to in the first place. The paper trail was there, and the agents only needed to locate it. The signs of corruption were certainly there. Oh, so, adrift in the sea of leads, huh? That's not good. Uh, we are wasting time. So, basically, that would not go anywhere. A network of relations. 
We already did this before. I think we just do the Navy, so we'll go back to the Army, I guess. I guess. Regarding... About affairs in Shanghai. Um... We don't have the option for that, I think. Because if we look at it... Chongqing Trail. The Sako, so the American stuff. Profile Dai Li. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. But we only have five options. Gaining access to archives? So, naturally, anything pertaining to covert military operations in a hostile foreign power would be closely guarded behind safes, locks, and guarded doors. The first step to accessing these records was fairly simple. The archive building would be scouted out day and night. Each entrance would be checked for alarms. Guard patrols would be memorized, and any potential job opportunity that might get one inside the building was to be quickly taken. More and more information was gathered regarding the archives. Photographs were taken of the exterior and surrounding areas at every hour of the day. Eventually, blueprints of the building were discovered, providing the spies with a new level of insight. A plan was beginning to take shape. The next step would involve getting inside the archive for long enough to expand upon their limited insider knowledge. The fastest possible route from one entrance of the SACO files would be plotted, and if possible, tested before the actual break-in would take place. These next few steps would be delicately executed, even with the pressure from the government back in Japan. Some back in Tokyo demanded a quicker operation, yet this course of action was ruled out. It was better not to start a diplomatic incident with the U.S., while at the same time dealing with a possible conspiracy within the ranks of the army. Just a little bit more time. On to better things? Cool. The industrial renewal we have planned out is close to completion, and it will be Takagi's crowning moment. Remembered forever in the annals of history, Japan's economy is renewed, her people made rich once more. Let us enjoy our spoils and celebrate before we move to other problems facing Japan. Because that one does give us more political power, and I like more political power, but what are we going to do with it right now? Crash, light, crash site laid bare. The crash sites would be examined first upon the investigator's suggestion. After all, the American documents were at least being preserved in a drawer somewhere. Their journey from the airport to Nanjing and through the mountains of southwestern China presented them with a multitude of memorable vistas. They traveled by railroad and finally footpath to reach their destination. There was nothing short of deeply refreshing to leave their Tokyo office for more than a day or two. The sets themselves consisted of wrecks of about four downed American aircraft lost during their attempted evacuation in 44. In the ensuing 20 years since the inv initial investigation had closed with little to report other than the obvious, nature had distinctly managed to reclaim much of the wreckage. Nature had also begun to creep back into one or two of the sites with a wing or two sticking out of a, a few of the crops. The site was steadily becoming more and more disappointing as investigators looked on. With the aid of the report coming from the previous team that had worked on the crashes, the investigators were able to confirm one thing. The previous report was absolutely correct. The planes were some of the last that had attempted to at leave China and had been caught by anti-air gun positions to stop them. Apart from some battered ration kits, a dog tag, and some other personal effigies, the search was fruitless. Worst of all was the lack of anything that had led back to Dai Li or even a hint that perhaps some Americans were still out there. They would need to widen their search perhaps into Tibet. Had anyone managed to escape the crash or otherwise survive the evacuation, then they would have to quickly try to move on. The investigators could quickly take solace in one thing alone at this point. At least the scenery would continue to be interesting. Dig deeper. Initial findings. Ooh, we've already read this, so... Yeah, let's about the army again, so something fishy indeed. Okay. Investigation begins. The Sichuan humidity was tempered by a missy morning drizzle as raindrops tap on the window in Takaichi's Takamura's office. My apologies. What was usually called respite for the liaison's officers turned into an immense distraction to his work on the investigation. Opposite him was Masaharu Sato. Jovially whistling the melody of a Shanghai barroom singer playing on the turntable. Cut it out, Sato, I'm working here. Well, what the heck are you going to even start? There's 20 new groups calling themselves resistance fighters every month, only to reveal themselves as extortation gangs in their second week. It's not what you... It's not what you... Forget it. Just turn down the turntable a little and pass me that folder. Noteworthy groups and organizations. Interesting little folder for a backwater like this. The folder was, as Sato had mentioned previously, filled with irrelevant and trifling groups. Heck, there were even six groups claiming to be the direct loyal... Directly loyal to the Chiang Kai shek himself, ignoring how he's dead, and decidedly so for more than 20 years now. Takamura's lights a cigarette and sighs in frustration until Saito or Saito breaks the silence. Hey, how come that new monastic order from Hui isn't in this file? Why on earth would you raise a suspicion on a monastic order? Because Tsuji shoots darn near anyone who tries to leave. Either they're ridiculously lucky or they're not from Hui in the first place. Like sand in a sea of sand. The order of this auspicious jade. Why the heck did I didn't figure, guess that earlier? I told you before, Takamura, no real resistance fighter group would actually come out and call themselves resistance fighters. The Order of the Auspicious Jade was an ordinary monastic organization on the surface. Adherents of Mongolian Buddhism, they claimed to be refugees from Hui State An, organization dedicated to forming a mutual aid network through the Circle of Temples to alleviate the misery as well as the savagery brought by Suji's administration. Noble on the surface, it seems, with little reason to su suspect. At least until one realizes that it's not impossible to evade Tsuji's cavalry patrols roaming across the borders of Hui to ensure no one escapes. So what now? 
Well, we could just wait for them to reveal themselves. I heard from one certain Zong Liren. They don't even speak Mandarin in the Northwestern dialect. One of the leaders sounds even like he's from Yunnan. Takamura knows that they don't have much time, but who can really... But who can he rely on for a quick and decisive raid? The police? Poorly equipped rabble who are bathed in a cloud of opium half the time? The Kenpai type? Who's to say that they're not allied? Or allied? The only reasonable option left is the army, and he could count on a favor from a certain gambling ad adult colonel. Give me the address of the order's headquarters. I'll ring Colonel Tamichi. Tamichi. Once he gets his hands off the bottle. Let's snoop him out. Yeah, this is not good. LPA cornered. This can't be real. You think we finally struck something? I'm sure of it. Northern Chengdu has been a red blip on the armies since two weeks ago. Quietly uttered uh, Takamura as he let out another prop from his half finished cigarette. It seems as though he's finally cracked down or tracked down the ever elusive, loyal, patriotic army, at least whatever's left of it. Though this was a shot in the dark, it was the only shot the department had in the moment, and time was ticking away before they could yet again bleed into the countryside. Maybe we can finally get this Dai Li crap moving. Maybe so, Sato san, maybe. Takamura and Saito quickly realized that their overstretched police squadrons probably wouldn't be up to the task for a job like this, and unfortunately, there's only one more authority in the region that they could trust to expand the mission with the army. The pent up paranoia from the inter service rivalry, partisan and partisan attacks, understandably, have made Takamura incredibly reluctant to cooperate with the army, let alone on such a high risk mission like this. Unfortunately, only the army has resources for such an excursion to both conduct the sweep and gather sensitive intelligence from the countryside. Ring that old dog, Fujimara? Fujimura right now. Tell him Takamura wants a meeting in confidence as soon as he lets go of that bottle. Oh, and don't bring that Kenpai tie into this, not yet at least. Takamura knows he has to act, and he has to act fast. Now his entire premise hinges on whether the army is willing to cooperate in the sweep. It's the oddest things that bring the strangest bedfellows together. No luck. The expanded investigation site demanded a considerable, considerably larger staff for the investigators to make use of the make use of. Forensic teams, excavating equipment were all requested from the home miles, and alongside the additional manpower came a number of small boats, trucks, and even a helicopter in order to better survey the landscape. Well, the areas surrounding the crash plains were surveyed by the new team. The actual investigators from the investigators had moved on to Tibet. There, they had hoped to find some evidence of the route taken by the Sako after leaving China. Yet, the trail was clearly found to be colder than the mountains that the investigators tracked through. Locals confirmed that the American soldiers had indeed traveled through their communities, but they never stayed for long and never left a trace of their presence. The Chinese side of the investigation proved to be equally disappointing. Despite searching the area in what could only be described as a thorough manner, the team found little more than a few scraps of metal from the crashed planes. They had sunk to the bottom of a nearby river, and upon the extraction, the scraps unearthed that shed some, some shards of ancient Chinese boat pottery. These were jokingly regarded as a real finds the entire expedition, although the investigators were never allowed in on the joke. After several weeks of searching, only one more object of interest was found, a single plane. It had gone down over the Himalayas, and by examining what little remained of it, the investigators were able to only achieve one thing. It told them the same, now redundant facts that they had all known since they first read the initial report from 20 years ago. Frustration runs deep. The analysis of transferred money. Now, I'm glad we did this, but apparently it doesn't seem like we did much. Well, the Camp Ate officers were currently out of reach, having been reported as out, out on covert assignment. The families were not. Unfortunately for this investigation, there was... That was where the trail of money led them. The Kenpai Te officials suddenly discovered fortunes that had not been sent directly to the bank accounts. Instead, the money had gone towards their close relations, the girlfriends, wives, siblings, and parents. We've already read this before. Hmm. Much work to be done. Hmm. Sounds like is clearly there. The Iberian divorce. Well, goodbye, Iberia. Um, I'm not really sure. It's... Uh, oh, Sako records found. Oh, look at this. In the end, it took merely one open door and a faulty electrical system to gain access to the Sako files. The janitor on duty had been careless enough to leave the back entrance way unlocked after finishing up for the night. Five minutes later, the power went out and the security guard called for an electrician to resolve the issue for the brief 15 minutes. The building was completely dark and a security a little laxer as the security guard himself escorted the electrician to the fuse box. Yeah, that's all it took. At the same time, a man in a black coat entered the building and removed exactly one document from the Chinese section of the archives before leaving and drifting, driving off in a rather anonymous van. He would later meet with a janitor and the electrician to celebrate the successful operation. The cargo of that van was handed off to another agent waiting at a nearby airfield. After a number of plane and cargo journeys, uh, car journeys from the east coast to the west, and a brief stop in San Francisco, he boarded a boat headed to Hawaii. Waiting there was General Fujiwara himself, who had been anxious to see the documents delivered. Now they were in his hands, safe on his personal plane en route to Tokyo. It was there that the files were finally opened. Behind closed doors, Fujiwara and the Prime Minister, alongside their other trusted officials, gathered to hear what the Americans knew. It was simple enough. A mere list of fates of the Sako members listed alphabetically, beginning with those killed. One name of interest cropped up, General Joseph Stilwell, confirmed to have been KIA. The symbol of politicians continued to scandal us with a growing sense of anger and urgency. Just as it seemed that they were about to hit another dead end consisting of nothing but returned, more and more Americans were listed as MIA, possibly have been forced to stay behind. Yet one name did make the officials pause in their tracks, the name of a rumored friend of Dai Li, Miles Milton E., Admiral. 
MIA, lasting three days prior to the full Sako evacuation. Admiral Miles never left China. We actually found some piece of evidence. Uh, uh, drift in the Sea of Leeds. So be it. And we've already seen this before. Let's snoop them out. Cool. So, a red herring. You know, I don't even get, get why we're chasing Dai Li even, that come around. I'm not even sure if this man is still alive. The room fills with cigarette smoke par for the course of the overwork liaison officers in the tropical hell that is Sichuan. A thin, measly light bulb shines in the room, leaving faint shadows, faint shadows exactly like the ones Sato and Takamura were chasing. I don't either, but the evidence is here. I'm sure it is. We just have to find... Takamura was an intro by a courier. Heaving to, having, heaving to catch his breath, the courier manages to give the officers a salute before handing her a folder to Sato. On his cover lay the words, After Action Report. Sato peeled the next page, eager in anticipation. What greeted him made his heart sink. Hey, Takamura, you may want to see this. Fearing the worst, Takamura snatches a folder from Sato's hands. It starts sank to his stomach, too, when he read its contents, followed by a deep sigh. Jun Tong unit caught red in raid. Not affiliated to Dai Li. Any organization's connections to Dai Li is fragile, if existent. Commander's suggestion. Terminate investigation. Dai Li loots us again. Oh! A waste of time. Okay, cool. Um, finding in the 40s, particularly active, this ultimately did a little bit dampen the effect of the failure. They'll be forced to return to Maine and Tokyo for a good while now, while the government turned towards other assets for aid. Uh, and, and Sako was a secret only kept by out of reach American officials and Daly himself. In the U.S., the Japanese government employed a number of spies to provide him with insight as to the workings of the U.S. government. Since the Daly conspiracy had been first uncovered, these figures have been waiting to figure out, find out exactly what the Americans might come to know of the situation. Their time was now soon to come with, with Tokyo desperate for answers. Besides, guarded state secrets must surely contain some useful information and mission of utmost urgency. I'm sorry, I didn't re really read that one, just because I, we've seen so many of these like, like, like time and time again that I'm kind of confused about which ones we've already read, but round up and change is successful. Masahuro, uh, Masaharo Sato stands underneath a street lamp in a seemingly empty robe. Taking out a match, he lights up one and wipes it on his boot. He repeats the weird gesture again, twice for posterity, posterity, upon the third match. Eight plainclothes agents armed with Arasaka rifles and Nambu's emerge from an alley. Almost thought you forgot the signal. Where's Takamura? Bureaucracy. The nine men walk up to the monastery's compound carefully, while stopping behind a corner to avoid a sentry. The sentry made a fateful turn towards the patrol as Sato locked him in a chokehold with a knife to his throat. I know who you are, and I know what you do. If you cooperate, I'll let you live. So answer the question, good. Is the order a Juntong unit? The sentry nods, gulping nervously. Good man, two of you keep him tied here. The, attached, the attacking detachment split themselves into two units, one from the main entrance, and the rest from the side gate left unlocked by the sentry. The ensuing firefight was a one-sided slider with only one Japanese operative Deb, as Sato approached the corpse of the Order's leader, he stumbled upon several dossiers left in an unlocked safe. Operation Auspicious Jade, Chengdu Infiltration Contingency. As the foot soldier lies the personal seal of Dai Li, as well as one of Jun Tong's seal of approval, Sato lets out a grin, his work here is done, all in a day's work. Cool! So we actually have some evidence of stuff going on. Ooh, the leads, well, oh, goodbye, regarding not gathered stuff. Gathered sufficient evidence against the for Jun Tong. Uh, successful! Ooh, we already read this once. Yeah. Gulping nervously. Two of you keep him tied here. All in day's work. Cool. Not gathered sufficient evidence regarding the Admiral. Or Shanghai. Um, regarding internal disruptions or investigations. We have gathered evidence uh, about the Chinese involvement in the investigation. Have gathered evidence regarding the Juntong operatives. So how it operates. Gaining access to the archives. Naturally, anything pertaining to covert military stuff. Uh, we've already read this one, getting access to the archives. So, investigation begins. Well, we already read this too. Like sand in a sea of sand. We've already read that one. Um, this is getting kind of repetitive at this point. I know Japan isn't perfect. Like, from my understanding, it's not perfect yet for its focus tree and stuff like that and decisions. So, we'll see what happens. The Order of Auspicious Jade again. Uh, yeah. Let's snoop him out. Sako records found. Yeah, we already read this one too. MIA last seen three days prior to the full Sako ev evacuation. So. I oh, got the cryptography done. So we'll see what happens. If we can do well here, maybe we can, maybe we can't. I don't know. I just want to get cooed or anything like that. That'd be not very good for us. Adrift to see it leads. Cool. All in day's work. We've gained evidence, of course. Hey, on to better things. Nice, we can do that one. 
What we need to do? Oh, we, we need to do this one. <laughs> Encourage big, Asian big science. With the spirit of scientific discovery and education restored in the Japanese people, the greatest advancements will come with the help of our allies in the co-prosperity sphere. A multinational committee of Tokyo from Tokyo will operate with a staff of thousands of Asia's smartest and brightest men and women, a substantial budget from all contributing members, and a number, uh, number of great projects to begin work on. These plans range from the discovery of new elements to colonize on Mars, even to the possibility of replicating living cells. No challenge can be unconquered when all of Asia stands together. Very good. Improved anti-air, don't mind if we do. We've got plenty of political power, though. Let's see, grab that, can we grab that, no. Ooh, let's see, nothing there. Anything here? Not really. Armor, let's grab some of that, then. We've got five days for more research. Ooh, let's get done that one more time. Hey, actually, that's not bad, minus 2.9%. Th it was three po minus 3.9% before, and the debt is still only 2%, which is not bad. Going to do this one. Battle groups. Thank you very much. And I guess we're not looking into it anymore. Ooh, another carrier. Don't mind if we do. 49. Gosh darn. Well, yeah, that's kind of a death stack fleet. I'm not sure if we should keep doing this or not, because we've already done them all. We've already gone through, like, Sako. We've gone the Chongqing Trail. We tried to create a profile of him, too. Investigate the Chinese Intelligence Service. I mean, we could try that one again. I mean, we'll do it live, of course. Encourage Asian big science. Let's go and do moving forward. Though our economic and scientific plans have been laid out and passed through the die, our potential cannot end here. Popular support for government remains strong, and with the aid of not just only our own people, but of the many layers of Japanese bureaucracy, perhaps all of Takagi's dream for Japan can finally come to fruition. I mean, we can try to investigate these guys again, but. We'll see what happens, I guess. Minus 55 billion, not bad if I do say so myself. Diplomatic training, can we do that one? A little bit of lag. It's only 68, so it's almost 69. Nice. Very good, very good. Well, let's see what happens. Urban remodeling. Oh. What was that? What benefit we got? Oh, and we should probably build up some more civilian factories, too. Well, if we can in some areas. Boom, boom. Three areas? Yeah, that's not bad. Could be better, but hey, I'll take it. Anywhere else? I don't think so. How about Hawaii? How's Hawaii looking? Not too bad. Not too bad, yeah. Only 5% more max factories in the state didn't do that much for us, but hey, that's okay. We've got plenty of things we can build up, so. Let's go invest in there. Our mandate advances. Prime Minister Takagi had, left, had taken the evidence given to him by his duty quite seriously. In the months following the conversation, he had taken great care to keep a close watch on both his allies and enemies. Much work had been done, and Takagi suspected that his uh, vigilance had played a significant part in achieving that. There had been indeed much resistance to his reforms, a great deal of which had been made clear to him in the Imperial Diamond and, and by a variety of figures within the IJA. There had been a number of attempts to lure the Prime Minister's allies away with bribes and threats, some of which had succeeded. Yet in the end, it had not been enough to topple the Prime Minister. For every ally lost, there were plenty more willing to take their place among the growing ranks of the Liberals. The growth of Takagi's movement has only helped to reinforce the successes of his reforms. The dwindling cases of high-level corruption had only, not only eliminated a number of Takagi's rivals, but also helped to effectivize the services they once abused. Militarization, an issue that once toppled Koichi Kido's government, was also in decline. It was beginning to become clear that the government, not the army, would oversee colonial matters from now on. Even the economy, once in shambles, was starting to recover. Takagi's corporate negotiations and the government investment in new technology and industry had wrangled the flaming or flailing private sector into the beginnings of the working order. By this point, the Prime Minister's mandate had been established and was tolerated by the Imperial Diet. Takagi's attention now turned towards refining and har harnessing his political base, as well as the possibility of securing further alliances with the within the YSK. Finance Minister Nakasona was now ready, also ready to put his proposal for a liberalized economy into action. Then the colonies would also need to be thoroughly re-examined in the hopes of truly extracting the very best out of the co-prosperity sphere. Takagi's mandate was in truth only starting to take effect. The liberals' cause sails forth. And do we have a focus tree? Or no harm in change? Oh, we can't do that one. Oh, we can't do that one anymore. Um, is that, it says we have, we have options? Can we do something else? No, we can't do that one. Ooh, that seems to be a little glitchy or something. Um, anything over here to the right? Hello, anything? Death of duty. Yeah, we zoom out all the way. A little bit of lag. Zoom out, this is the entire focus tree. So, uh, it says we have more focuses. Um, I'm not seeing anything marching forward. I, I think I'm going crazy, maybe a little bit. I mean, of course, with Japan and its current standing. Uh, more passive defense. This is kind of gotten cold as well. 
This is going a little bonkers in my mind, but... You know, I guess I'll end the episode here. If there's nothing else... Uh, we'll see what happens, I guess. But regardless, this could potentially be the last episode in the campaign if we find no other thing. I'll let you guys in on another update. So, if this is a final episode, I hope you enjoy the campaign, maybe. Uh, I don't think it is, but regardless, if you enjoyed the episode, consider leaving a like, subscribe if you're new, check out my Discord link in the description below, and I'll see you tomorrow, hopefully, if this campaign hopefully will continue. And regardless, hope you have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching, and have another great rest of your day.